Hey, what's up everyone? Ultimate Atomic HD here and today on Deck Spotlight I am finally, finally showing you off the next deck that I promised a long while back which unfortunately got delayed due to not obtaining all the cards I needed for it in time and yeah, I'm showing you off a Magician Girl deck profile one of my, another one of my favorite archetypes ever to exist not as much as Fortune Ladies, but it's still one of my favorites, like I just said. And you would think that they would have more support than Fortune Ladies, given the fact that Magician Girls are hail from the Duel Monsters era, you know, the marketable era of Yu-Gi-Oh! But no, outside of their one support wave, which came from the DSOD movie pack, nothing, nada, zilch, nothing. Yeah, it's kind of puzzling to say the least, but yeah, uh, I've managed to cook up this very interesting, well actually, uh, I did very little in this uh, deck per se, because this de deck is largely based on the deck that was showcased in Mega Capital G's video titled This Magician Girl Walk is So Cruel which essentially boils down to getting uh, high attack beat sticks which are normal summonable onto the field with the help of solidarity and the effect of uh, Magician Girl Kiwi which we'll get into uh, throughout this video. However, I took this deck because I re actually kind of liked it uh, in, the, in concept and modernized it by completely overhauling the extra deck which was it was present in the video, and but it wasn't. Uh, Cap G didn't have the deck profile at the end of the video, so we have no idea what kind of extra deck the player uh, from the video was running. So I essentially took the most modern solutions in the both in the main and extra deck. Essentially, the whole extra deck is has been modernized since the video came out. So yeah, without further ado. Uh, let's get going. So first off, we're starting off with a three off of Berry Magician Girl because this is a, a search on normal summon. It's a one for one target if you ever so desire it, even though this deck uh, does not run one for one because this thing doesn't uh, benefit uh, much by hitting the field with special summon. Uh, since it searches only on the normal summon and it can also special summon from deck when attacked So it's far from the worst option here in this deck Then we have a 2 off Lemon Magician Girl A 2 off because uh, she special summons only from the hand and she also negates the effects of the monster she, uh, she is summoning which is kind of a bummer, but hey, she can still fetch you some decent targets even with the effect negation. And then we have another two of that being Apple Magician Girl. Um, again, she also uh, special summons from the hand, which is again kind of a bummer. But in, in hindsight, it's essentially the same eff effect as uh, Lemon Magician Girl without the effect negation and her additional effect. That being the recyclability can actually help you out with uh, some of the other monsters we'll get to in a moment. Uh, and yeah, I forgot to mention the first effect of Lemon Magician Girl, that th that thing is barely pulled off. Well, it can be pretty proven nifty if you're setting up your graveyard for a solidarity, if you don't have it. But then we have but our next monster that will go over, another 3 off. Uh, Chocolate Magician Girl does the job way better since she is essentially the archetypal strategist of the Ice Barrier. Yeah, that's the closest thing I can compare this thing to that springs to mind. Anyway, obvious 3 off make, makes you plus and deck thinner, everything decent, beat, beat stick and everything. And if you, and if it's a level 4 water monster, so you can actually make use of Bahamut Shark if you ever so desire in this deck. This deck doesn't run it, but you have the option at least. So yeah, and last of the, well, semi-last, semi-final of the Magician Girl lineup, of, uh, of the monster lineup, we have a tri trio of uh, Kiwi Magician Girls, which is essentially 
uh, I discard attack boost, they can all stack and it's also graveyard setup for solidarity and if you manage to get them on the field you have some decent protection for your magician girls so that's pretty nice to consider and finally last thing from the titular magician girls a single copy of the regular dark magician girl even uh, even though she's essentially a vanilla monster here because this um, this deck does not run um, any copies of the regular dark magician or the regular magician of black chaos so yeah she's essentially a vanilla monster but we do have a uh, dark magician in the side deck if you ever so happen to be a fan of it and decide to run it and then we have single copy of dark magician of chaos so it's a pretty decent beat, beat stick it banishes everything it destroys essentially combined with solid, double solidarity and yeah it, it's an unaffected by uh, kiwi magician girl because uh, kiwi magician girl only uh, affects magician girl monsters but still it's a relatively high beat stick and it can re recycle your spell cards which is also very nice and closing off the monster lineup, we have a trio of uh, Fairy Tale Luna because quick effect bouncing and shuffling. Um, basically, this is yeah, quick effect bouncing essentially. But for extra deck monsters, it might as well be spinning. It basically uh, searches other copies of itself upon normal summon. But yeah, you can also search any other Fairy Tale monster, but. This deck doesn't run any other fairy tale monsters because they are either too specific or too slow. And of course, fairy tale snow is currently banned as of the most recent ban list. So yeah. Anyway, that does it for the monster lineup. Now we move on to spell cards. We have two copies of Sacred Village of the Spellcasters along with one terraforming to search it out because locking you on the opponent out of spell cards can mean a death sentence in most decks and yeah it can be pretty devastating and to help on uh, to help out with that we have a uh, magician's left hand which negates the first trap card effect that the opponent might try to pull on you and yeah the effect is mandatory so the uh, opponent can actually bait it out if he has the means to do it but so yeah but better watch out for that but overall it's a fantastic uh, lockdown and yeah, even now since Red Reboot has been banned uh, for the first time ever and Royal Decree yeah it is a decent tech choice but it can be a bit too slow in some situations then the two copies of Solidarity the mm, a pair of cards without without this pair of cards this deck mostly cannot function because uh, this deck doesn't special summon a whole bunch it's primarily meant to spit out uh, large beat sticks on a single normal summon so yeah solidarity is kind of a given for this even though if you do uh, opt for if you do have the chance to make some decent extra deck monsters we'll go over that as well and like I said this deck does not special summon all that much so you do have uh, three pot of dualities because free setup and deck thinning obviously it should go without saying then Monster Reborn to basically give you a comeback whenever you need it or essentially a recovery tool, whatever you might need. And now we move on to some disruption. First of which we have two copies of MST, Spell and Trap Removal, up to Wazoo. So yeah, it's kind of a given. Then Forbidden Chalice to either bump your monsters up further if you need it for the OTK range or to basically disrupt the opponent with the effect negation and magical dimension to uh, give, give you access to some problematic high beaters which might be stuck in your hand and also pop one of your opponent's monsters if you have uh, the chance to do so the monarch storm forth for basically the same thing and basically um, gives you a kaiju like removal engine in the deck so that's also neat to consider a rival rivals which essentially can uh, gives you an additional normal summon during the battle phase because like I said this deck doesn't tend to uh, special summon all that often so an additional normal summon is very neat in this then we have dark hole to clear the field of the uh, problematic monsters when needed and lastly for the spells one copy of instant fusion because we have a single target in the extra deck that is summonable by instant fusion 
And now for the last four cards of the main deck, the trap cards. We have two copies of Dimension Guardian, which offers very uh, nice protection for the in your deck for a battle-focused archetype. Battle-focused engine of an archetype, should I say, because you can play Magician Girl somewhat in a non-battle-oriented way. And then we have a copy of Solemn Warning for, for preventing summons and all that. And lastly, we have Torrential Tribute, which is essentially another great form of disruption for this deck. So yeah, that pretty much does it for the main deck. Now we are moving on to the extra deck. First off, the single solitary target for instant fusion and the only fusion monster in the archetype, in the deck, sorry. That being Thousand Eyes Restrict, when basically fetches the, uh, fetches the opponent's monster and removes it outright from the field and can be used as material, as excellent material for our next uh, monster from the extra deck, that being Relinquished Anima, which is essentially you you open up with Instant Fusion, go into Thousand Eyes Restrict, then you use Thousand Eyes Restrict, which has snatched a monster to go into this, snatch another one of your opponent's monsters, and you normal and you can even normal summon something else and go into one of the link twos. And yeah, this uh, deck really really loves going into link two monsters when it gets the chance. And those link two monsters can be uh, we have all of the link two charmers, one of each for each attribute. So Hira for fire, wind for wind, Asad for earth. Uh, he uh, the, then uh, Lena for for light, dark for dark, and area for water. So yeah, uh, with this you can basically fetch any monster from the opponent's graveyard and go into a link three, which I'll get into a bit later. And then for other link twos, we have. Uh, other link to spellcaster links that you can make Pazlomino the drop and the leader then Daybreaker the shining magical warrior and Akashic magician for the sum of that uh, either self bouncing or bouncing off uh, the opponent's problematic monsters yeah, yeah like we basically uh, concluded at the start of the link here Akashic magician proved very useful when grinder golem was still a thing it has some utility still if you manage to uh, summon, uh, as, uh, for example, if you manage to summon or relinquish Anima under it, it can be improved use, be proven useful for de deck thinning or something. So yeah, it's, uh, and all of these are pretty good, uh, especially Daybreaker because well, and so there and there are two monsters which I do not possess physically that are part of the deck profile, which are, will be present in the. Uh, in the replays, you as you will see, which uses uh, the spell counters, and that is of course the uh, Celine Queen of the Master Magicians, which is fantastic and is basically monster reborn each turn um, for your spellcasters, and you'll be quite uh, throwing around quite a few uh, spell counters, and then it's obviously a great way to go into another monster which I do not possess physically. And is part of this deck profile, and that is Access Code Talker, which is essentially one of the best game enders uh, in this deck, and you're going to be seeing him in the replays a lot. So yeah, if the prices drop uh, for these cards, there is no doubt that I'll be getting them, unless some of them might get banned uh, in the future. Well, who knows? We'll see. So yeah, that pretty much does it for the extra deck, but there are two other uh, monsters which are not summoned all that often, but they can be nasty surprises for the opponent if he happens to not expect too much. First off, we have the five-headed Link Dragon, the Link 5, which requires any five monsters, and if you summon him by using the Fire, Water, Earth, Wind, and Dark monster, it's essentially a a screen nuke, a, a field nuke for the opponent, and yeah, and you usually don't want to summon him too early on if you have the chance, because of its high maintenance cost. You usually summon him on the turn where you have established a decent and decent amount of graveyard setup, or on the turn that you are attempting to finish off your opponent, since this thing is also unaffected by card effects. 
and yeah that's the best form of protection a card can have and last but not least we have the arrival at Ign the arrival cybers at ignister i link 6 which is a bit easier to make than five headed link dragon and it also has that great immunity effect and you can also easily make him with the link to charmers so yeah it's a uh, it's an again a boss monster that you don't go into for too often but they along with five headed link dragon it can prove to be a quite a nasty surprise for the opponent okay so that does it for the actual deck now let's go over some side cards that i placed in the side deck for this deck profile and first off we have a little engine if you decide to run Dark Magician in your deck, so essentially Dark Magic Attack, which is a uh, Harpy's Feather Duster if you have Dark Magician on the field. Uh, then Dark Burning Attack, which is a Regeki if you have Dark Magician Girl on the field. And then the com their combined version, the Dark Burning Magic, which is a uh, field nuke for the opponent if you have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl on the field. And it's on a quick play spell, that makes it extra good. And then we have a cute shortcut in form of dedication through light and darkness if you want quicker access to Dark Magician of Chaos if you're running Dark Magician. Thousand Knives, which is pretty standard and subpar uh, target and pop effect, which usually I wouldn't include, but making it searchable via Eternal Soul makes it a huge plus, so I just wanted to include it for at least some style points, if anything. And that does it for the small Dark Magician engine. Then we have some uh, generic spellcaster support in form of two copies of Magician's Defense and uh, some unconventional choice in form of Dark Horizon, which I know it relies on the opponent beating the shit out of you, but uh, it can, you can float into either Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl, or Dark Magician of Chaos. Or, yeah, there are no other good targets in the in the main deck but yeah it, it can be it can be a funky surprise for the opponent and not to mention for blind MST uh, these two cards can result in another revival of your spellcaster monster so it's pretty neat to consider it also halves battle damage that you take in case you fail to set up your OTK board with the magician girls and then we have some other generic support cards such as Effect Veiler because um, negating monster effects is crucial in today's meta and Effect Veiler does a very good job at that and it's also a level 1 tuner and a spellcaster as well so if you happen to be feeling in a mood for some synchro monsters you can take them in as well. Then we have Book of Moon, which does pretty much the same thing as Effect Veiler, but it also has the potential to shut down extenders really hard. Uh, and then we have another unconventional choice in form of uh, United We Stand, which is a decent final push if you do not have all the, uh, all the punching power of the OTK range that the Magician Girls can offer. And then we have some... A nice uh, monster removal in form of Liberty at last and Get Out, which uh, do have their restriction. I mean, Liberty at last, your monster needs to be destroyed by battle in order to uh, meet the activation condition of shuffling two monsters the opponent controls, well, two mon and any of the two monsters on the field into the deck. But hey, this, uh, this deck is focused on doing lots of battles, so you can also crash something of your own, of your own uh, into something in order to force the activation and forget out the targets need to be extra deck monsters but hey those are pretty prevalent and mo and most of the time the opponent is going to end on a board w with one or two extra deck monsters so it's not too uh, far fetched so anyway that does it for this deck profile i really hope you like this deck and yeah, I will feature the replays that I promised at the end of this segment right now. So anyway, who knows what next uh, when the next deck uh, deck spotlight is going to be, but I'm pretty sure it will be really good as the Fortune Lady one and we'll see how this one does. 
So yeah, I'm hoping that both of these will be really good and well received just as, a, just as the Fortune Lady one was. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, vlogs and updates. Comment, like and subscribe. Be sure to check out my Patreon when you got the time. Maybe drop a few donations if you feel like it. And as usual, I'll upload the next vid whenever I can. See you all and have a good day. Peace and enjoy the following replays.